Hey, Riderly Besties, and welcome back to the Riding with Anna New podcast, where we talk about all things writing. In today's episode, of course, you saw the title. We're going to be talking about how to create a magic system for your book. I am so excited for this episode. You probably know me, and you probably know that I love writing world building. I love planning, you know, magic systems and just like really letting my imagination run free. I think it's the most coolest thing whenever you're starting any sort of novel. But of course, if you have a magic system, that's probably a really big indicator that your book's probably a fantasy and fantasies are my favorite sorts of books. So you're in luck. Um, I do want to kind of also mention that I'm like recording this in the morning, so I might have a bit <clears throat> of a morning voice, so don't mind that. And I think there is a crow croaking in the background, so also, <laughs> can you hear that? Okay, crows are so loud, like why are crows so loud? Also, something about crows, this is like totally not, you know, <laughs> related to this episode, but after reading Six of Crows, I just call all crows cares. Like, is that just a weird thing? Like, a crow comes swooping in and just, like, sits on the bench next to me. I'm like, hey, cares. Like, ah, oh, it's, it's a bit weird. Anyways, um, world building. Yes, we're gonna get stuck straight into this episode. So, yeah, I hope you guys find this helpful. Okay, so first things first. Something I really, really encourage you to do before you even think about what sort of world building, um, like, you know, what sort of actual sort of magic system you want to create, I think it's important to decide something. Decide if your magic system is centrally important to the plot, to the whole book, to your characters. A way to kind of see this is if you kind of imagine your book as a planning document or if you do have a planning document and you have world building as like its own sort of title and under that you have you know magic systems maybe it probably doesn't indicate that it is you know such a big part of your book because I believe that it would have its own category because it's so big and so important to the plot or you can be on the other side that like yeah um, it is a part of the world building, it is a part of the story, but it kind of takes more of a background, um, sort of role. And, yeah, some sort of example that I want to give you is the project that I'm working on at the moment, which is Project BB, and that is, it does have, like, a huge world building aspect to it, but it is not really technically um you know relevant in the story it's kind of just like background law and it kind of does get progressively important toward the end of the book and like the final reveal sort of thing but it's not so much about the actual magic it's more so of the symbolism of that magic in my book so kind of just thinking about like is it actually like physically like up are your characters shooting balls of fire out of their hands or is it more just kind of like a symbolism sort of thing that's in the background instead of the forefront so by kind of deciding that I guess you're probably in the second or the first category I talked about which is like it is very important um yeah it's just such a such a good thing to think about when you are like you know starting to actually figure out what your magic system is about okay did you hear that crow oh my gosh Shh, trying to film. Anyways, now I want to get into the types of magic systems. And this is essentially like giving you guys ideas on, you know, what sort of category <clears throat> your magic system really fits into. So I have five right now and I just, I think they're so, so fun. And I seriously wish like I had the time to really like dive into each of these, but I think they're just very good starter sort of seed ideas for you to kind of figure out like, oh, that sounds cool. Or like, okay, like I recognize that and I think that could be a good thing in my book. Okay, so number one, elemental magic. Of course, elemental magic is kind of like if you watched Avatar Lost Airbender, it's where it's like the elements of the world, like water, fire, earth, stuff like that. And, you know, your characters or your people in your book use that as magic. The second sort of magic system is supernatural beings magic and that can include like ghosts or spirits or like kind of like demons or something like spiritual if that makes sense so like supernatural beings yeah like ghosts and stuff like that um yeah so that's the second one 
The third one, which probably is my favorite, like Loki, is academia magic. And that includes like spell book magic, um, magic that you need to learn in order to uh, yeah, use. And I guess a distinguishing factor around, you know, this in regards to like compar- comparing different sorts of systems is that something like an academia system, anyone can really learn how to do magic because it's probably usually based around spells or just like huge amounts of studies. So if you're thinking about wizards or Harry Potter, I guess you have to be a witch or a wizard, but still like it's possible if that makes sense. Okay, the fourth type of magic system is God-given superpower magic. So that can include stuff like demigods, if you think of like Percy Jackson, just like these really big sorts of powers, um, yeah, that are given by a third sort of entity. And that usually really includes a lot of lore, a lot of history, and yes, yeah, sorts of like heavenly beings and goddesses and gods and like um, Greek mythology and stuff like that. And that's really cool as well. The fifth and final thing is multi-world magic, which I kind of did say that academia magic was my favorite, but I think this fifth one is my favorite favorite because multi-magic um, or like multi-world magic is kind of, yeah, about all these different sorts of magics, all these sorts of different civilizations and things like coming together. And that kind of includes, for example, the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit, where there's like elves who have different, you know, magical powers or like different, you know, skills. And then there's like the Hobbits and, you know, of course, Sauron and like all these really cool um, characters with different sorts of powers. And of course, there's like mages and um, a lot of just different, yeah, multi-world aspects in one single world. So yeah, they're kind of five of the well-known, or at least like I kind of identified as um, for your magic systems to really think about. (sighs) Okay, so that was a lot. But now you're probably thinking, um, which one should I pick? And what if I don't like any of them? Or, you know, how am I actually going to choose? Well, I think it's important to actually, you know, know that you might be thinking, oh, like, I want to do elemental magic, but I think it's just like so overdone. And I don't agree with that because I think nothing, like I always say, (laughs) I always say this, and that is that there is never an original idea. You're always taking inspiration from other books, other people, even your your life and um, the world around you. So, you know, everyone who's written a book about a magic system, that's already been done before. So if you want to do elemental magic and you, if you think it really does suit your story and the, the story you want to tell, just use it. Also, another thing I want to mention is around this, and that is that you can do a spin-off of these types of magic systems. So for example, um, the whole idea of academia magic, um, my one of my other current projects is called um, Project GS. And there's basically, it's like kind of, yeah, surrounded by spells, but I also incorporated a different sort of element. And that is the fact that um, minerals and gems and like those sorts of really cool, like, you know, topaz and uh, gold and these sorts of minerals have power that you need to like use in order to cast spells. And then I kind of got me thinking like, oh, maybe different families have different gems and like you know all these sorts of things and like maybe there's prestige against you know these sorts of minerals of what different families have and then also the powers um and stuff like that and I just oh I just love it so so much so I kind of incorporated almost two different sorts of magic systems into one so remember you don't have to be just stuck in a box about the laws of what you think is how it is Literally, it's your story. You can do whatever you want and you can just incorporate so many ideas that you have. Okay, so of course, how do you actually get the inspiration? How do you actually get the idea? Um, that I have two things for you. Basically, you need to have inspiration, which I kind of talked about before, but also ideas from your own novel. Use your own inspiration. Use your own like brainstorming because... 
once you kind of have that document, which I always call brain vomit, and that's where you just write stuff about your book, you're going to end up coming across an idea. And as you continue writing all these really incoherent dot points, you will hopefully get to a point where you're like, oh, that's kind of a cool aspect. Maybe I can turn that into a magic system. Those sorts of ideas are important. So now you have your idea and like, what do you do now? Like, I have my idea about the gems and the uh, the idea of like spellbook magic. So now what do I do? Very good question. I have three things for you to do. Firstly, your law. I love law and this is L-O-R-E. Um, so it's the history, how that magic began, your like society, both, pa- both past and present. And uh, this is just like the most fun thing because I love history. I loved learning about history in school. So this is kind of quite natural to me and also getting ideas, just like coming out with names of these great mages or these amazing places that aren't here anymore. Just like all these awesome ideas can really come into play. And even if it doesn't, you know, uh, make an appearance in your final novel, that does not matter because you have that law, you have that context, you have stuff that builds upon your idea of magic systems. So yeah, for example, with my project um, GS about the gems and the spellbook magic, I kind of thought about a um, long, long time ago, there was this family called the Grey family who looked up to the sky one night and comets fell from the sky and they were able to harness the ability to go and mine and essentially use these minerals for protecting the whole world civilization and normal humans. So they basically became mages from outside, sort of, um, yeah, literal comets. So I thought that was really cool and that idea just like came to me um, through all this planning, through all this just thinking and just patience. Patience also is a key thing. The second thing is physicalities. So physicalities is like the restrictions, the supplies that your magic needs, who can use it, who can't use it. All these sorts of things really are so important and they're essentially like the laws, L-A-W-S, of your magic system. Because if, you know, anyone can fly, if anyone can turn invisible, there is no, like, you know, <laughs> your your audience would, you know, get a little bit confused and it'll be like, what? That doesn't seem very good. And of course, if it's harder to attain a magic, such as like thinking about levels of magic or when you think about academia magic, you have to be very smart and study and actually be like mentally strong, go through these trials, go through like this whole thing, graduation, for example. Like that shows that magic is really important to your book and also that it is hard for anyone to do magic. And that's also kind of showing how sacred and cool your magic is. The third thing, finally, is how it fits your story. So how does your book fit your story? That can include your characters, your plot, like how, like what sort of role it plays in your plot, the meaning behind your magic, which is very important. So some ideas I kind of have written down as like legacy, maybe that magic system, you know, allowed legacy for these small minority group of people maybe it's like long lost magic and it's retaining and like getting it back or like redemption these sorts of themes are very good things to talk about and kind of just keep in the back of your mind when you are thinking about your magic system um also of course when i say characters and plot maybe one of your characters has magic maybe one of your characters don't you know just think about all those things and i'm sure you'll be able to plan your whole magic system and create one for your book. I hope this helped you. I know I was a bit out of like breath for the whole video. I gotta chill out. Anyways, I think that crow has finally flown away so I can (laughs) think normally. Um, But anyways, I hope you really enjoyed um, listening in today. Thank you so, so much. I'd appreciate it if you could see, no, no, subscribe. I mean, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, but also follow me on Spotify because it does really help and it shows that you support me. Um, Yeah, I 
wish you luck in all of your writing and I bet you're going to come up with amazing world world systems, magic systems, and it's just such a fun time. So really just enjoy it, really just be patient and really just try to gain inspiration from people, places, books, and other people's ideas. It's, it's a great time. So yeah, I wish you luck and I hope to see you in my next episode. Anyways, I hope to see you soon and yeah, happy writing.